Praise the Lord, everybody. This is ASW, and you know what time it is. It's that time to take this ride with me to the J-O-B. Let me see if I can straighten out this camera a little bit. Okay, that'll have to do. Can y'all see me? <laughs> anyway, I pray that everybody is doing well, doing fine, enjoying Jesus and all his joys. I know that I uh, certainly am. So, I'm a friend of mine, dear sister in the Lord asked me if I would come and discuss uh, this topic that actually came up in a conversation that she was having with one of her co-workers. Amen. And in that conversation, she told me that her co-worker, um, she and her co-worker were discussing the difference between Christianity and religion. Um, of course, the co-worker, like many, had had a negative experience in the church or with church people. Um, and so, therefore, she did not profess to be a Christian. Um, she didn't profess to be religious at all. Um, now, when we really look at the biblical definition of what Christianity is and what religion is, we will find that there is a vast difference between being a Christian and just simply being religious. Amen. Many of us are religious about going to work every day because that's something that we have developed as a pattern. And if you look up the definition of religion, as far as um, in the dictionary, you will find that religion is simply a practice discipline of faith, something that you serious, that you strongly believe in, that you pay, that you basically do daily or on a consistent basis. So many of us are religious about, amen, paying our bills, I hope. Many of us are religious about going to work, like I said. We're religious about cooking dinner, you know, because what? We have a strong devotion to a conviction concerning doing that. It's a part of our daily practice, a part of our daily obliga uh, obligation. But yet, religion many times has nothing to do with spirituality. It has nothing to do with what the Word of God says. Now, when you look at um, the Bible, it tells us what true religion is. Amen. I challenge you all to look up that scripture. And when you find that scripture, post it in the comment section. I'm not going to give away all the answers. But true religion, what does the Lord say about true religion? And many of us will find that we really don't have true religion. We used to sing that song, you must have that true religion. We used to sing that. We don't sing it anymore. And many times religion has now taken on a negative um, connotation because we, we love to say this. I don't have religion. I have relationship, which is wonderful. But we really ought to have both. Amen. We ought to have true religion and we ought to have relationship with God, which what um, being a Christian is all about. Christianity or a follower of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, you can be diligent in going to church every Sunday. You can be diligent about paying tithes. You can be diligent about, diligent about offering. You can even be diligent about doing things that seem to be good things and honorable things and still not be a follower, amen, of Christ in your conviction. Hallelujah. Many people are very religious when it comes to um, how they live their life. They really do live morally if you just look at the standards of morality, they live morally pure and correct lives. However, um, their relationship or their right standing with Christ, that's another thing. Amen. So what I want to do, I want to encourage all of you today to be in right standing with Christ, to seek to be Christ-like in all of your ways. To truly be a disciple means to be a disciplined follower. You see that word, disciple, disciplined? To be a disciplined one. A disciplined follower of Christ. Amen. Following his precepts, following his example, following and living by the standards of his word. Amen. Loving like he did. Treating everyone as he would have. Amen. Truly having um, Christ-like convictions. Wow. And that is a challenge. <laughs> I'm telling you. It's easier to become a member of a church, but it's a challenge to be truly Christ-like in every situation that you're faced with. So um, that is a response to, um, like I said, my friend and my sister in the Lord who asked me to just expound on this subject in a video. Um, and I pray that we will learn to be Christ-like. Now, I feel like everything has its place. It is important to, um, you know, have practices that reflect Jesus Christ. Uh, many times religions, though, 
have um, focused on minor things and have majored on the minors. They made they majored on the minors and they have minored in the majors. You know, the things that really, really matter to God, um, we don't do those things. You know, um, Jesus speaks about um, giving and about loving and about living a life that's, uh, that's filled with humility, um, brotherly love and kindness. Wow. And those are the things, those are the basic things, treating our neighbors as ourselves. Those are the Sunday school lessons, but those are the things that we struggle the hardest with. Amen. Because it's hard. It's not, it's not, you know, it's not always easy to be a follower of Christ. It's, it's easy on some days when everything is going good. You're feeling right. Your money's right. Amen. Everybody treating you right. But to be Christ-like in a world that is full of hatred, full of evil, full of controversy, full of scandal. My God, it is, it's, it's, it's a challenge to be Christ-like. But Jesus told us that we could be holy as he is holy. And to be holy simply means to possess the attributes of God's holiness. Amen. You need the Holy Ghost in order to be holy. There's no way you can be righteous in of yourself because then you only have self-righteousness. But if you seek first the kingdom of the Lord, the kingdom of God, uh, if you seek first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness, then all these things will be added unto you. You'll be in good standing with the Lord. Amen. Um, pure, only the pure in heart, the Bible says, shall see God. So we must make sure that our hearts are pure, even when we are performing religious acts. There are many people that sing in the choir, that serve on the usher ministry, that um, are part of um, various outreaches and ministries. Amen. But they have missed some very important, comp um, important components of being Christ-like. Amen. And so we must examine ourselves, not pointing the flinger, finger of blame, at, at someone else but examining ourselves daily asking the Lord to keep our hearts pure before him asking the Lord to purge us of our dead works so that we may do things that glorify the Father amen to truly be Christ like is not just summed up in a religion it can't even be summed up in a denominational practice so many denominations thousands upon tens of thousands of expressions of how to truly practice Christianity. Amen. So many denominations. And now you even have people who say that they are not Christians. They are um, the elect of God. You know, oh my goodness. You have people who now even take offense to being called Christians <laughs> because they don't want, they, you know, they're saying, oh, well, no, I'm not a Christian. I'm a believer. I'm I'm not just a believer, I'm a disciple. Listen, all of these things, all of these things, amen, simply should reflect our life after the pattern of Jesus Christ. Not simply believing that there is a God, not simply believing that Jesus is God, but also doing all we can to live according to his word. Will we mess up in the flesh? Of course we will. Will we fail many times before we get it right? Probably so. Because unfortunately, <laughs> we are human beings. We are clothed in a body of flesh. So when you get mad or when you get angry, you may do some things that do not reflect Christ. But keep on striving to be Christ-like. And the only way you can do it is with the help of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit has to teach you how to please the Father. Amen. Holy Spirit has to teach us how to pray teach us how to worship, teach us how to be like Jesus Christ was. And I thank the Lord because the Bible said that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the from the dead will also quicken our mortal bodies, which means the same spirit that rests upon Christ, that lived in Christ, when we invite him, amen, when we become saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, he lives on the inside of us. And therefore, we have the power, we possess the ability to be just like Jesus. Listen, I'm getting excited about this. I am so glad to know that in this world, I can still be like Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And it's such a blessing when you see yourself growing in Christ, when you see yourself taking on his attributes, when you see yourself doing things that you would normally have a different reaction, a different response to. 
but yet you remember a scripture that you read, you remember a sermon that you heard, or a song that you sang, you remember something that triggers your mind, hey, wait a minute, we gotta be like Jesus, Lord have mercy on the job, Lord help me to be like Jesus, amen, in every day of my life, I wanna be like the Lord, so anyway, I pray that this blesses you, that this helps you, those of you all who are watching this video, I pray that every day you are striving as I am to please the Lord and to be like Jesus. Amen. Them that live godly also know this. Them that live godly shall suffer persecution. Whenever you make up in your mind that you want to be Christ-like, don't be surprised when people talk about you and call you holier than thou and self-righteous and all these things that they love to say um, that we are we don't be uh, uh, upset when people become critical of you when you become under you know like you feel like you're under the watchful eye of everyone who wants to prove to you that you haven't changed and that you haven't been saved amen don't believe that just keep on striving just keep on pressing don't be discouraged amen by the persecution that comes because re remember to be like Christ also means to suffer like Christ did. He suffered for righteousness. He suffered at the hands of those that thought themselves to be religious. Pharisees and the Sadducees were very religious in their tradition. They worshiped in the temple. They read from the Torah. They practiced giving alms. They did everything according to the law that they could do. But yet, they still needed a savior. They needed a redeemer. Why? Because in all of our doing, everything that we do still won't be good enough. We need the grace of God. We need the mercy of God on our life. That's why he tells us, amen, that it is by grace. Hallelujah. It is by faith that we are saved. It's not a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. By grace, through faith, hallelujah, that we are saved. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. It is by grace and through faith that we are saved. It is the gift of God. It's not of works, lest any man should boast. Therefore, we can't stand on the hilltop proclaiming, oh, I did, I've done this, I've done that. I helped save lives. I gave a certain amount of money to the charity. I helped feed the homeless. I helped feed the hungry. No, you know, it's by grace. Hallelujah. It's by grace that we are saved. It's God's grace. Hallelujah. His unmerited favor. The Lord's undeserved goodness that we are saved. There's nothing that we could do that could ever earn the favor of God. He gives us his favor because he's good. Hallelujah. Okay, I'm getting excited. Listen, I hope I answered your question and I hope that you are encouraged. Those of you all who desire to be saved, who desire to truly become Christ-like, just pray with me this prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your word. Thank you for your example. Thank you for living in this earth. Thank you, Lord, that you live, you died, and you did it for me. Thank you for the ultimate sacrifice you made on the cross. I do acknowledge that you died for my sins. Hallelujah. I do acknowledge that you shed your blood on Calvary Cross. And now, God, I take on uh, that responsibility. I take on the knowledge, the uh, tremendous gratitude um, because, you sh because you suffered for me because you bled for me and I thank you Lord for your sacrifice and in the name of Jesus I ask that you would come into my heart that you would cleanse my life that you would purify me that you would make me a brand new creature hallelujah that you would wash me in your blood hallelujah that I can become just like you now God I pray that you would fill me hallelujah with the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus hallelujah and I pray oh God that you would give me the power, the keeping power that I need to live Christ-like in the earth. In the name of Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen and amen. And whether you've been saved five minutes, 50 years, that prayer still applies. That's a part of my daily prayer every day. Help me to follow you, Lord. Help me to be Christ-like. Help me to be like Jesus. Amen.
Praise the Lord. And also, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, you never received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Amen. You've never been baptized in Jesus' name. You've never been filled with the Holy Ghost. This is your divine opportunity to do so. Amen. You can receive in your heart. Amen. But you also need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Evidence was speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God gives us utterance. Go to a church. Amen. Where they believe in the baptism in Jesus' name. And let someone, let an anointed minister of the Lord, an anointed servant of the Lord, amen, baptize you in the water in Jesus' name for the remission of your sins. Amen. God bless you in Jesus' name. If you need scripture references for anything, please write me. If you have questions about anything that I've said, you can write me. It is a, bless it is a pleasure and it's a joy to share the simple message of the gospel with you today. I'm at the red light. I'm going to turn this video off. God bless you. Thank you, Sister Brittany. Mwah! Love you so much. Thank you for asking that question on behalf of your coworker. God bless you all. Remember to enjoy Jesus and all his joys. And thank you for making ministry possible. Bye.